Have you ever been in the situation where you want to play some Tarkov but none of the crew are online? So you sit in your stash organising things and maybe play a scav raid or two because solo PMC raids, well, they're just so oppressive. Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're beating solo anxiety and getting you out into the world of Tarkov by yourself. Most people develop solo anxiety from their original experience playing the game, which is basically getting their ass handed to them continuously and so they resort to either teaming up with other new friends or getting carried by those who already know the game fairly well. So after a while, if squadding up is all you've really known, then it can be daunting to load in on your own. To begin breaking down this blocker, we need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of a solo player. Tarkov's design with limited HUD, lack of friendly fire markers and low time to kill actually makes it relatively solo friendly once you know what you're doing, especially when compared to other extraction shooters. Versus Call of Duty DMZ or The Cycle, you can take out multiple people extremely quickly. Well, at least in theory anyway. But in order to perform well, it's necessary to utilize your advantages as a solo as much as possible and to minimize your weaknesses, which brings us to probably the biggest advantage that solo players have, which is no comms. This is an incredibly powerful aspect of playing by yourself because it takes away a whole layer of mental workload in tracking where your teammates are and continuously communicating to make sure that you don't shoot each other. The whole, is that you? I'm by the rock next to the tree and the all time classic anticipatory I'm dead, which then leads to a team kill are all avoided. Experienced duos or squads can eventually avoid this, but it requires many hours of play together to achieve seamless communication, and even then it still sometimes goes wrong. What this means practically is that you can shoot on sight with no hesitation or pre-fire any corner at footsteps, which sometimes will give you the initiative. Even player scavs normally have to figure out if you're a PMC or a scav so as not to lose scav karma by accident, leaving solo players as the few in this game that can be totally trigger happy and get away with it. You're also able to play the game at your own pace, rather than having the speed of the the group dictate how quickly you traverse the map. This can give you more time to stop, listen and gain situational awareness of distant gunshots for a better read of the current raid state, or on the other hand it can let you push a fight extremely quickly without having to warn anyone else what you were doing. The added benefit here is not having to wait for teammates to sell every last piece of loot or painstakingly put together their next loadout after a failed raid, which really cannot be underestimated. I'm sure many of you have someone in mind who is that guy. As just one player, you are much harder to spot than a team rolling across the map, which helps get into situations where you have the initiative and the first shot advantage. Likewise, it's also easier to leave a fight and reposition depending on the map, which can either be done to simply run away from a bad engagement to survive or hit a huge flank to surprise your opponents. Moving and being dynamic in fights is important because those players that you encounter don't know that you are solo, especially at first contact, and creating the impression that there could be more of you makes it much harder for the other players to engage you in PvP. Now, this is all great, but there are obviously downsides to playing solo as well, which we're going to have to minimize in order to be successful. One of the biggest issues is the inability to cover all of your angles. With multiple people, you're able to keep eyes on most of your surroundings, whereas an individual can only be looking in one direction at any one time. The counterplay to this is map knowledge and to traverse the landscape in a way that leaves you open to as few sightlines as possible at all times. Experience obviously helps with this of course, but try to be deliberate about your pathing to keep low behind concealment and have an exit plan if things go bad. Not only does this type of movement help minimize the chances of being seen in the first place, but it also helps to identify where you're being shot from when it does happen, because there are now limited places that the aggressor could be. Despite doing all this, there are times that you will get surprised, and for a solo player, using painkillers before you get into a sticky situation is really quite important. Being shot in the leg halfway between two pieces of cover is often a death sentence. With others in your squad, there is the possibility of returning fire from the other members of your team, but on your own, it's extremely hard to get out of these situations. This is especially because strafing with a break sways the weapon around like crazy and makes it really hard to fight back. I still forget to do this myself and I am training to constantly remember to pre-pain, especially through dangerous places or near extracts. Vaseline, Ibuprofen and Golden Star are the typical go-to pre-pain items as you get multiple uses in one slot and they last a long time. 290 seconds for Ibuprofen, 350 seconds for Vaseline and 370 seconds for Golden Star. Just make sure that you have enough food and drink to take the hydration and energy downsides and perhaps keep an SJ12 if you have a stims case for miscarriage calculations. I have a whole video on this stim if you're not sure exactly what it does. Ibuprofen and Golden Star are most popular because if you use them down to 1 out of 15 and 1 out of 10, you can then craft Propitols in the med station level 3, which are the best hot bars stim once you're well established and have enough money. Another big problem is running out of ammo against multiple targets, especially in close quarters. There are often situations where you can kill one person out of a duo, but the next guy takes you down on the reload because as soon as they hear it, they can push into you while you're vulnerable. You can deal with 
this in a few ways depending on your preferences. Firstly, conservation of ammunition through your loadout by using semi-auto weapons with high damage and pen output, the idea being that you need less bullets to take a player down. A great example is M61 for the 762 NATO weapons. Secondly, through positioning, it is possible to fight a squad one at a time, the old divide and conquer tactic. Engage each member where the others cannot see you, flanking and popping up in unexpected places and at a range such that you are able to reload between each mini engagement. Finally, the brute force method is to pick a gun that has the ability to take a big drum and hold down left click. A few examples that are good here are the RD704 or the AKs which has a 50, 73 and 75 rounder depending on the cost, ergo and space requirements that you have and the M1A which can be furnished with a 50 rounder too. Standard magazine 556 and 545 weapons with their 60 round mags can also work. Although something like the MP7 is a very good standalone weapon and even comes with 40 rounders itself once you have the trader levels, the fire rate of the gun means that you'll probably have to reload more quickly than your opponent which means that you'll just have to be a bit more careful not to mag dump if you want to make this kind of weapon work. Now while we're on the topic of weapons it's usually advisable to use a suppressor but not absolutely necessary. However if you do choose to go without one it's important to be keenly aware of it and always be thinking about your position. Whenever you fire you need to get out of the area as quickly as possible to set up for the next engagement. My rule of thumb these days is to simply not be in the area where the last shots on the map happened. You can even use this to your advantage though because players often get drawn into gunshots when looking for a fight which can sometimes lead them across your path if you move quickly and deliberately to a new position. Okay so picture the scene, we've killed one player and we think there is either another one remaining or we know for sure that they were in a pair. The main priority is finding this second player because typically what happens if we don't do it quickly enough is that the engagement cools down, all the sound and visual cues go away and the more time that elapses the further that they could have gone and the more places they could be hiding. Once our positional information starts to get really fuzzy, typically two situations have occurred. They have either been wounded badly and just leave or alternatively they have found a good spot on their buddy's body and they're waiting for you. This second situation is very very likely. This is one of those Tarkov situations that really sucks for solos. Remaining teammates have an incredible reluctance to leave their friends bodies and are willing to wait for a very long time to see you dead. If you can't see them, hear nothing and have no idea where they are then wondering about trying to find them will often end up getting shot out of a bush and a trip back to the lobby. There is no shame in simply leaving and letting them waste the next 25 minutes of their raid sat in a bush over 200k's worth of gear that you may or may not come to take. If you are going to make an attempt then yes you could counter camp the body but I think that's a bit of a waste of time. Other than this, grenades are by far the best way to do it. What you need to do is get the remaining player to move position so you can have a more normal fight. Without nades it's a seriously uphill battle. On that note, you will find it harder economically as a solo player for this exact reason. The likelihood of getting your kits back in squads is dramatically higher than that of lone wolves because it only takes one member to survive the fight to hide the kits and prevent others from taking them. If a solo player kills a trio they are probably only able to take one and a half to two players worth of kit and that will only be certain higher value items at that. If the trio kills the solo, not to mention that this outcome is probably more likely in the first place if you aren't landmark, you can expect to be stripped entirely outside of the really low ruble per slot items like face covers and ratnik helmets. For this reason insurance is less valuable for solo players. It's still worth it most of the time in my opinion but it's not as fruitful as when you're playing in a team. The best advice that I have for those those players looking to get into solo play is to just start practicing. Pick one thing from these topics that I've discussed and focus on making sure you do that thing well in each raid, whether it be flanking, pre-painting, looting, etc. This is the best way to develop muscle memory and automatic decision making in your brain, which once set will let you move on to the next topic and slowly develop your PvP skills and confidence. If you are really starting at the beginning with no confidence, then simply make the goal of the solo raids to extract and pick a few low traffic loot spots until you're comfortable moving around the map on your own. Here you should focus deliberately on pathing and sightlines minimizing potential angles on yourself at all times and think about positioning in case of an engagement which are useful skills later down the line anyway that you'll have to learn at some point so it's not time wasted. Finally just remember that playing solo gets easier with practice. Everyone dies in Tarkov often and there's always another player and you'll be well on your way to navigating raids on your own proficiently and hopefully enjoying yourself in the process. Next up go and check out my video on gear fear which is related but different in many ways. Otherwise as usual a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video and as always have fun in your raids.